Welcome back to Every Other Carl, I'm Carl, and we're getting close to finishing the shed build. Today, I'll walk you through the painting, trim, and electrical fixture installs for my 10x16 shed. In the last couple of videos, we installed the drywall and an exterior light. Now, we're finishing the sanding and painting. We got this awesome chandelier at a garage sale for 30 bucks and wanted to paint it black to fit the aesthetic of the shed. Since we hadn't painted the walls of the shed yet, this was the perfect controlled space to spray it in. We sanded it down with a fine grit sandpaper, then cleaned it and primed it with a self-etching primer. Then we sprayed it matte black and set it aside to dry. Our next step was to start painting the walls and ceiling. We used Sherwin-Williams flat white for everything. It would have been better to use an eggshell paint on the walls, but we had this leftover can and we only needed to buy one more to finish the job with a couple coats. With the paint dry, it was time to install our electrical fixtures. Our first job was to put some spacers behind our electrical outlets. A few videos back in the electrical install video, I explained that I installed the electrical outlets and light switches before putting up the drywall because I wanted to use them. Installing these metal washers as spacers was the price I had to pay for this decision. It's not difficult, but it is time consuming to get every outlet and switch flush with the wall, but it's totally worth it. We just used small metal washers and then nylon covers. With the outlets and switches taken care of, I installed these commercial electric recessed LED lights. These are some of the easiest recessed lights to install. Just hook up a couple wires, and then they have spring clips that hold them in place into the drywall. I'll leave a link to these in the description. With the recessed lights installed, it was time for the chandelier. We shortened the chain by several inches, and then installed it as the centerpiece right when you entered the door. In the electrical video, I showed that behind this drywall is a strong ceiling fan mounting bracket that is firmly anchoring this chandelier into the rafters. The final electrical fixture was this Heatstorm 1500 infrared heater. This is only 100 bucks on Amazon and it does a decent job of heating the shed. It connects to Wi-Fi so you can turn it on remotely or put it on a schedule. I might talk more about this in a future video, but for now, this heater with a supplemental propane heater buddy heater get this place adequately cozy. With all the painting and electrical done, it was time to move on to trim. These beams provide structural support for the loft. I initially thought to cover them with drywall, but we decided sanding and staining them added some cabin-like character. I'm definitely happy we did. I also added a piece of pine trim to the front of the loft and stained it to match the side beams. This came out great and just looks like a big beam supporting the cabin. I'll be adding some finishing touches to this beam in a future video. Speaking of a future video, you might notice that we built a ladder and finished the floor at some point. I used luxury vinyl plank flooring, but I'm making a full video on that process, so subscribe and stay tuned for that. In keeping with the cabin vibe, we left some trim unpainted, like this 4 inch wide pine trim around the door and the window sills. We might paint them in the future, but I like this natural look for now. Speaking of the windows, I'll give you an overview of how I trimmed these out. So the process for trimming these windows is the first piece that goes on is this top piece underneath here. And then the stool or the, the sill, that bottom piece down here. And then fill in between them with these side pieces of trim. And then it's kind of up to you, but I've been putting the side casing on and then the top piece and then the bottom piece underneath. So I'll show you that in real time. I'm using these pre-primed pine boards. Home Depot sells these. They're kind of a step up from just the fiber boards that you can get. Uh, way better, highly recommend using actual wood. This is three and a half inches by half an inch and Home, C Home Depot sells them in packs, either a door pack or a window pack. I got a couple door packs. Uh, I think it came in five pieces per pack and they are a little over seven feet long. And the fact that it's pre-primed makes everything so much more efficient as you're putting it up. For me, I can just split one down the middle and that's just the right um, depth for my inside pieces. And then the outside pieces just cover them up. I'm measuring everything in place. I'm just putting it up against the wall and making a mark and then making my cut, not bothering with a tape measure.
All right, so the next piece to put on is the stool, or the sill, the bottom piece down here. I'm using this one inch by three and a half inch pine board. This is the cheap stuff, they sell better stuff, but this is working for me. Um, if you want it to be stronger, I would recommend getting um, a higher quality wood, but this is working just great for me. So I'm extending it just a little bit beyond the edges of the trim on either side, and I'm just notching in the, uh, the two sides so that it sits flush into the window frame here. Yeah, I'm going to measure that in place here. Just find exactly how far in I have to notch it. On both sides. And then just to help me measure, I'm getting the exact middle of the window. So it's 36 inches. The rough opening is 36 and a half inches. So that means the center point is going to be 18 and a quarter inches, which is right here. Mark that. A little line, and then I'll find the exact center of my stool here. So this is cut at 44 inches, so the exact center is going to be 22. I'll mark that. Now if I just line those up, my stool is exactly centered and I can find my marks on the ends here of where my notch is gonna end. There, and right here. And I can just use my square to bring these two lines together. And that's the notch, I'll cut it out, and it'll fit right in. All right, with the top and bottom in place, I can put these side pieces in, and I'm gonna put them in so they really fit in tightly, and that's gonna give some support to the stool as well. All right, you might notice this nice big gap here. I have heard the term, do your best and caulk the rest, so I will be filling all that with caulking. All right, all my interior pieces are in, and now I'm gonna start with the exterior casing pieces. And I have a few already rough cut. Um, I'll make the final measurements here so that when the top piece comes in, it's gonna lay right flat on top of the side, and it'll be flush with this uh, interior piece as well. And with those in place, I can go ahead and put my top piece on. All right, the last piece I'm gonna put on is a bottom piece right underneath here. That's the same length as the top piece. And I'm gonna tuck it up really tight because that's also adding some support to the sill here. All right, everything is in place. Now I'm just gonna finish it off by hammering in my longer finish nails. These two and a half inch finish nails give the trim some strength, much more than the brad nails in my brad nailer. All right, everything is nailed in nice and tight. Now I'm just gonna caulk all of the joints. I'm using DAP Alex caulking. This is a super inexpensive caulking and it does a pretty good job closing any gaps in your trim and molding. I'll leave a link to it in the description. All right, I put caulking in all the interior joints there. I'll just put some along the outside edges when I'm ready to paint. This is a pretty easy way to trim windows and very cost effective. If you're looking to upgrade on my method, I would suggest using a hardwood stool or sill. While I was working on the windows, my wife was busy painting the front door of the shed. She sanded it down and used an exterior black paint. We added some matte black hardware and this door became a statement piece. 
With all the downstairs windows done, the only window left was the skylight in the loft. This wasn't too complicated, I just added some trim all the way around and gave it some gloss white paint like the rest of the windows. Like I said in the beginning, we're getting really close to finishing the shed build. In the next few videos, I'll show the flooring install, building a stoop, and building our loft ladder. But until then, I'm every other Carl. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you.